Hi everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Dr. Sid Cowley and I work at the intersection of Fusion and Artificial Intelligence at the FIA affiliate member DigiLab. Today is Wednesday the 27th of November and I'm here to give you your Fusion News Roundup and what a week it is. Stories today include 1. Nuclear fusion startup Pacific Fusion nabs 900 million in funding. 2. Japan launches fast fusion power project. 3. The quest to build a star on Earth. 4. Tokamak Energy heats up with 125 million from investors, including British patient capital. 5. Fusion startup claims milestone with unconventional reactor. 1. Startup Pacific Fusion nabs $900 million in funding. Our first story today is a big one and centers around the company Pacific Fusion. Never heard of them before? Well, you're not alone. The company is quite new and up until recently, it was completely in stealth mode. Several weeks ago, however, the company announced it raised over 900 million US dollars in Series A funding, representing one of the largest investment rounds in Fusion to date. It's no wonder then that this story has been featured on Wired and Bloomberg and is really drumming up excitement throughout the Fusion industry. But what is Pacific Fusion? Well, the company, based in Fremont, California, is not actually pursuing one specific approach to fusion. Rather, its aim is to leverage decades of research into pulsed power engineering technology, and in particular into impedance-matched Marx generators. This technology can deliver 100 nanosecond bursts of energy that account for the propagation of forward and reversed electromagnetic waves in the system. This tech can be used for a number of different fusion methods, from laser inertial fusion to magnetic Z pinches, and the potential applications are detailed in an open access paper entitled Opportunities in Pulsed Magnetic Fusion Energy. As Pacific Fusion develops their technology, that $900 million will be released under the completion of certain milestones. The team at Pacific Fusion consists of 44 people with experience in deep tech and fusion research at National Labs. Eric Lander, one of the founders, led the Human Genome Project and is founding director of the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard. So Pacific Fusion is certainly making waves as they start with a heavyweight team and incredibly strong funding. Going forward, I'm sure they're one to keep your eyes on. Two, Japan launches fast fusion power project. Our second story comes from Nuclear Engineering International and covers a really exciting announcement from Japan. The announcement is of FAST, the fusion by advanced superconducting tokamak, which is a concept for a superconducting tokamak aiming to generate electricity in Japan by the end of the 2030s. The project was announced by the FAST organization, a private sector led industry academia collaboration developed with fusion experts from Japan and abroad. These partners range from the University of Tokyo to FIA member Kyoto Fusioneering to Canadian nuclear laboratories and FIA affiliate member Mitsubishi Corporation. If you're interested in learning more, FAST has released details about their tokamak design, including the size, magnetic field strength, and the fact that they're hoping to generate 50 to 100 megawatts of fusion energy over 1,000 second pulses. But according to the FAST organization, the project is not just about fusion energy, but about technology demonstration. In parallel, led by Kyoto Fusioneering, we will accelerate technology development in key systems, engineering design, site selection, and regulatory efforts in collaboration with industrial partners. Three, the quest to build a star on Earth. Our next story comes from Raymond Song at the New York Times and is one of those fantastic overview pieces on fusion energy. Complete with stark images and videos from real fusion experiments, the article brilliantly describes the technical challenge of fusion on Earth. Atoms are fusing. High energy particles are blasting out of the plasma. Your machine has to survive the pummeling, but it also has to put that energy to work producing electricity, keeping the reaction going, all without disturbing your plasma, which is as precarious as a toy top spinning on a fingertip. 
The article then dives into the various technical approaches of the fusion industry. Throughout it all, the article highlights how much the fusion landscape has changed in the past decade. With a growing fusion industry and now big name investors, including Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, Vinod Kosla, and Sam Altman. According to David Gates, co-founder of Thea, if you asked me 10 years ago, should I start a fusion company? I would have said you're out of your mind. It's incredible to see just how much things have changed. Four, Tokamak Energy heats up with $125 million from investors, including British patient capital. This week is a huge week for investment in fusion. And we even have another announcement of funding for this latest story. This one, however, is quite an established company that you may have heard of, Tokamak Energy. The FIA company focuses on high temperature superconducting spherical tokamaks and is a spin out from the UKEA based in Oxford. In this recent funding round, Tokamak Energy raised 125 million US dollars with new investors including Furukawa Electric Company, BW Group, and the Sabanshi Climate Ventures. Eight million pounds of this investment is part of British Patient Capital's 425 million pound future fund breakthrough program, which supports R&D intensive UK firms with high potential impact. According to George Mills, director of deep tech at British Patient Capital, companies like Tokamak Energy put the UK at the forefront of this exciting market, which could provide a significant boost to our economy, whilst also helping to solve one of our greatest environmental challenges in delivering an alternative, sustainable source of energy. This puts Tokamak Energy's investment at $335 million to date and may hopefully allow for the company to build on their current device, ST40, and take more significant steps towards the path to commercial fusion. Five, fusion startup claims milestone with unconventional reactor. Our final story today comes from the Financial Times and covers the announcement of the first plasma from the fusion company and FIA member, OpenStar. Now, OpenStar is a relatively new company founded in 2021 and is New Zealand's first and only fusion company to date. Now, OpenStar is pursuing quite a unique method of fusion known as levitating dipole. The idea here is like a tokamak where strong magnetic fields are used to confine a plasma, but it's almost inside out. So rather than magnetic coils surrounding a fusion plasma, a levitating dipole consists of a fusion plasma surrounding a levitating magnetic field coil. It's a bold, unique idea, and certainly one of the most understudied concepts out there. In fact, there's only been a handful of these devices built before, including the LDX at MIT. So it's impressive that OpenStar now has this unconventional experiment up and running. They just achieved the first plasma with a temperature of around 300,000 degrees Celsius for 20 seconds. Though this isn't much compared to the hundreds of millions degrees seen in more mature devices, it's a great early stage demonstration. And what's particularly impressive is that it was completed in two years with less than $10 million. For context, projects like the ITER program cost around 20 billion. But what's next for the company? Well, they estimate they need around 500 million to a billion dollars to prove out all the technical risks. And so we're looking to raise a Series A investment round in the first quarter of 2025. Right, well, that's all for our main stories, but of course we have our bonus. Our bonus today is a video from Commonwealth Fusion Systems on a new exciting test on their central solenoid model coil or CSMC. If you've been paying particular attention to CFS over the years, you'll know a couple years ago, they made headlines with their 20 Tesla toroidal field coil test, or TFMC. Now they're testing a similar set of magnets, but ones that operate with ramped currents rather than a constant current. Right, well, that's all for this really big, really exciting week of Fusion News. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please feel free as always to like, comment, subscribe, and follow our socials. That's all for this time. I'll see you in the next episode.